And I believe that it's now first the concept, husband and wife both trying to satisfy each other for the reason that Paul said, our body doesn't belong to ourselves, belong to the spouse, the first. And the second is that Paul said, love your wife, submit to your husband. So when people love and submit, then the marriage, you know, there's a better chance that the marriage can work out. And also many things, there is communication, negotiate. The ability to negotiate means, okay, I'm here, you're here, can we come to a middle point? Can we come to a point that we both are satisfied? So I think a lot of times things can be uh, settled if they can communicate peacefully. The point is, many people don't communicate peacefully. When they see anything they don't like, they get angry. It's very common human nature to be angry. So I would teach this and counsel people this. Anger doesn't accomplish the will of God. And we want to be peaceful and explore and, and always say words of grace, nice words to other, to other person, words of love, so that the relationship is built up, so that when we have a problem, we can talk about it peacefully. But now the, is, the issue is that uh, the woman here, he, she is really needing that sexuality, okay. sexual act. Now, I, the Bible doesn't agree that this can be a reason for divorce. Mm -hmm. So I, in that case, I would counsel both to how to satisfy each other by the love and the words and by uh, sexual contact, body contact, uh, instead of just asking for one thing. That the Bible, so do we follow the Bible? Do we believe in the Bible? Do we believe in God? That we want to follow God's way. Now, if she doesn't want to obey at all, I, I still try to counsel, turn her back. But if, I think in most cases, it's not the woman who asked for that. I think in most cases, it's the man who asked that. And, but I if... Don't, I don't them can ask. Huh? Either man or... Yeah. So if that happens, all I do is try to counsel. I cannot guarantee that they will obey God. I try my best. As counselors, we cannot guarantee anything. But I myself will not agree to a divorce. I mean, if he does it, she does it, she does it of her own will. Mm -hmm. I do not agree to that. Now, at any one time as a counselor, is there any time that now you can allow divorce to take place as to, a counselor? To allow divorce? Yes. Uh, I would allow divorce because of adultery reason. Adultery reason. Yes. And then there are other reasons that I would first uh, give them a chance to separate from each other. For instance, heavy beating. Heavy beating. That, because the other person could be injured and could be killed if they have heavy beating. The second is, if the person steal money and gamble and use up all money in the family, no more money. The, 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 the other, you know, the wife cannot survive anymore. Then I would say, okay, I can agree to a separation and see if it can work out. If there is serious, serious problem. Uh, but generally, if, if just yelling, then I would try to counsel them for them to be able to forgive each other and be nice to each other. Okay. Now, there is this other case. The case of barrenness. Um, what? Barrenness. Oh, okay. No children. No children okay. in the family. Now, this husband, he has married. They have been married for a very long period of time. It's been almost five years or six. And then there's no children in the family. Okay. Now, the husband, from the because of the pressure from his side, uh -huh. he has now started to engage in outside marital act. Now he's saying whenever they come together, they say that I'm looking for a child. I'm looking for, for a, child. a child. I cannot say like this because all my agents, all the people we married together, they have children now, almost okay. two or three. So in such a case, how can you advise them? The husband requires a child, and in most cases, especially in Africa, if there is that case of no children bearing in the family, the woman is always the one to be blamed for. Okay. Okay. Now, 
if that's the case, I would, you know, pull from the scripture that the Bible says that those who don't have children who, who are not married have more children. That the Bible does say that. That so I'm saying it's more important to have spiritual children rather than physical children. Can we accept that? that according, according to African culture. Actually, many your worthiness is when you have a child. Say it again. If you are your worthiness, the worthiness of a family. There is that continuation of the family. So if there is no child in the family, it means you are wasting time. So they will have pressure. Wasting time? Yes. You have pressure. What, what do you mean wasting time? It means that there is no child which is... The family is not going to get any, any family. There is no that continuation of the family. Okay. So now, some people may pressurize the husband okay. to remarry another woman so that she can give birth to them. Okay. Now, well, first, there, is, there can be medical ways, medical ways for the examination of the man and the woman. But always the woman is blamed. Yeah, but the doctor will tell who is the fault. And then also, of course, this is very expensive, it's artificial uh, fertilization. Uh, but what I mean is, one way is to ask for doctor's help instead of divorce, because divorce is never the will of God and praying, praying to God that this will happen. So whether people want to follow God's will, that's very important. So we guide them to see when we follow God's will, then there is hope in our lives. When we don't follow God's will, there is no hope in our lives because then we're just following men's way. And uh, when we don't follow God's way, our whole life would break down. So, now the issue is this. The husband says that I want a child and she remarries, she marries another woman and start moving straight to stay with her outside that compound. Wherever the woman at home is complaining, the one she they married, they go to marry the first time, when she laments or she complains, she says, I want a child, that's if you have can give me, you can give birth to children, then I will not stay with that woman. But because you cannot give me birth, that's why I've taken that woman. Okay. See, they have, they have followed the worldly, so they have conformed to the world. Pressure from, pressure from the parents. Yeah, so this... I want a grandson. Okay. I want a granddaughter. Okay. You see, you are now aged. Why are you sitting with this woman? She has, she's nothing. She can bear nothing. So our family is not going to... There is no that continuation of the family. Look for a wife. Okay. In such a case, yeah, that's can... that's pressure from the world. Yes. So as Christians, are we willing to follow God <laughs> or follow the world and also pray to God? So I, I would disagree because the Bible doesn't give a reason of divorce uh, that uh, uh, they have no children for as a reason of divorce. So I would I would say that are you willing to follow God? And now if you commit, you know you have another woman that's adultery you're offending God do you want to offend God in order to satisfy the world so that's come to spiritual counseling whether they see God as the one who can bless and to accept that without children is not the worst thing in the world yeah. Indeed it is but according to African traditional society or our culture yeah. We have heard so many cases like that. Okay. Now what happens this? This woman can remain here in the in the previous home. Then the husband can marry another. He takes another woman. They stay in another. Okay. Well, that's something I disagree. But I, you know, I try to change. As I said, as a counselor, we try to change. How will you change? This one is demanding for a child. Tell you if you want me to stay with that, tell her to give birth to give birth to a child. How would you yeah. do that? The counseling you know that? would be to follow God when you believe God. Do you believe God to be the source of all blessings? Do you believe that following God is the best thing that can happen to you, to you? So when people don't believe that, they won't take any spiritual counseling. So in such a case, what are you what are you supposed to do as a counselor? I will help them spiritually to see that 
And also the Bible does say that we are just aliens in this world. The man wants children, not words. He says, I want children. If she can bear children for me, swell up. I'm going to give up the other woman. But if it's not like that, you can yeah. you cannot you cannot cancel me. So I'm asking God and children. No. Because in the Bible, Jesus just say that are you willing to give up all things for me? When we follow God, are we willing to say God is the most important or children is the most important? So there are people who forsake God because of children. So do you want to forsake God? So that's my teaching to them. I know in your culture it's difficult. Actually, not just in you. In China also. They, in China. In Hong Kong, it's not like that. In Hong Kong, it's very free. In China, it's very important to get married. It's very important to have children. But then in Hong Kong, people say, this is not really important. That in Hong Kong, they have accepted it. In a Western society, generally, they don't see that it's absolutely necessary to have children or to get married. They, so it's, it's we, we're guiding them to see which one is more important. Okay? That's, I mean, for this, that's all I can say. I, I can guide a person to understand when you follow God's will, God can give you children. Okay? Now, do you want me to say more about counseling skills? You are, what you're asking are basically situations. Yes. Situations, what to do in situations. But counseling skills is very important. Now, you tell me now, what are now the skills when you want to counsel? Okay. The most important, okay, the steps and the skills are like this. The first is, is the ability to listen. The first is listen. Yeah, it's very difficult. And after listening? Yeah, and, and the way to practice listening is like this. You have people pair up in twos, or can be in threes. And one person share about situation or feeling, uh, and then the other person are to repeat what he hears. And then, the f this person will say, um, okay, now A, uh, now A talks and B listens. And B is supposed to say what A has said. And then after he said it, and then A will say, well, not exactly like this. It is something else. And then he will try to understand why have I misheard? Why have I heard it wrong? And then find out why. And then this keep going until they can communicate and listen. And then the, what's the use of the third person? The third person will watch and see whether the person is listening, is responding, or the person is thinking about his own thing. Now very often it's like this. A talks about uh, in my marriage, my husband is like this, uh, children are like that, okay, and then B, because maybe he's a man, he's a man, yes. and then at the moment this woman talks about that, the man thinks, because it's your fault, therefore your husband doesn't like you. He has a reason behind that listening. Now, as pastors, you, it's very easy for us when we listen to someone who is not spiritual. We will say, because you don't pray, because you don't trust in God, you don't obey God. We have this idea. So if you pray more, you, you, uh, you obey God more, then you'll be okay. So we have a tendency to, we, we have an agenda. We want the person to change a certain way. So that is, that is our own agenda will affect our listening. So the first thing we practice, so you can practice with a wife and practice with other people and then your members can practice with each other. It will really help communication. Most people have problem listening. So first step, listening. And listening is not... So the listening should be done in a, with three people? It can be two, can be three. The third person just observe and tell them what they see. 
But it can be two persons, it can be three. But because but I think three are, is better. Yeah, it's because better. Because the third party can go, can also contribute or rectify where they are. Right, yeah. That was, the other right. one has forgotten. Right, okay. Now, listening is not just reporting the facts, also reporting what's the needs and the feelings. The needs and the feeling. So the first part is listening. And then the second part is responding. How to respond. And then we have to classify the way people respond. They can empathize. They can say it's difficult for you, it's not easy for you, it's painful for you. And they can say their own feelings too. Oh, when I hear that, I feel very sad that it happens to you. Now, these are good responses. But sometimes people start to teach. So pre people have to discern, this is teaching. When, when the person starts to say, you have to pray more, you didn't pray, or accusation, you did not pray, you have to repent. So people respond different ways. You'll be surprised how people respond a lot of times with instruction and criticism. It happens a lot, okay? So people need to learn to respond with acceptance. Now acceptance doesn't mean I accept that he will forever be like this. Yeah. Accepting means I understand the situation and I know it's difficult and I accept the feelings and then I can, then I can respond to the person and, and when the person knows that I empathize with him, then he would be willing to talk more and open up more. Now why is it important to listen? Because very often for people to counsel, they want to change right away. But they don't want to change. Like all the cases you told me, they don't want to change. Thanks. If you just tell them change, they don't change. But if sometimes the wife won't leave, but I listen and empathize and say, I know it's very difficult for you. And I heard the situation, I feel hurt. I really see that you have been hurt all these years and it's difficult for you. Do you want to, um, do you, believe that this marriage can improve? Do you think something can be done? Do you want it to be restored? So when I empathize, they have a chance to change. If I don't empathize, they don't have a chance to change. If I start teaching, if you don't repent, God will punish you. <laughs> She'll run away. <laughs> she won't change. So to change anyone, we need to have acceptance and love. Now even Jesus, when the adulterous woman came, He did not say, shame on you, you have committed adultery. <laughs> he said, neither do I condemn you. Whoever has not seen to be the first one to throw a stone. Yeah, right, at the beginning. But later when He talked to her, He said, neither do I condemn you. Sin no, Sin no more. So, so Jesus first accepted her. And, and Zacchaeus on a tree, that Jesus would say, come, I'll eat with you. So, it's acceptance that changed people. Okay, now, so, listening, responding to the feelings and the needs, and then, when we listen, and then we respond, and then, after we respond, then we try to analyze what's happening. Now, sometimes, one person has more faults than the other one. Sometimes, both people have faults, and I would, listen and I will accept both persons. I will not, when I talk to the wife, I will never say, yes, your husband is a terrible husband. I will not say that. I just say, I know life is difficult for you. And I want to, when I talk to the husband, I will never say, yes, your wife is a nagging wife. I will not say that. I will say, yes, it's, it's difficult for you and uh, it's, it's painful sometimes. And then we want to find a way. Do you want to find a way? to solve this problem, okay? So, so even though one might be more at fault, I will still be kind to them. Because even when Jesus talked to, you know, speak to, uh, prior to Jerusalem, 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 you have killed the prophets that have been sent to you. And I have tried to gather you, like a hen trying to gather the chicks. And, but then you are not willing. Still, Jesus was calling to Jerusalem. Come back, come back. So God always give them a chance to come back to, to, to God. So I would listen and then I would try to analyze the situation. Um, if the situation is very bad, for instance, the husband and wife, they really want to 
hurt each other, then my counseling will be different. Then I will not ask them to talk about the problems. I will ask them to talk about it separately. If they, any time they will beat each other, then I will analyze the situation. If the situation is already very bad, then I have to see what I can do. Now sometimes, in some situation, the person is in no mood to listen. Then I will just say, let us pray now. Just let the prayers, the presence of God, the peace of God comfort us before we talk anymore. I would decide. Sometimes people are not ready to talk. They did so angry. Yes, very angry. Very angry. Hard to talk. Then we just pray or maybe pray separately. And then comfort each person before we continue to talk. So we have to analyze. In a way, we still listen. Now, there is also this case. Let me finish the process and then okay. you tell me the case because I'm going through the process of counseling. Okay. And then, uh, so first listening, responding to the feeling, and then analyzing the situation inside us. And sometimes we need to guide the person, the people to analyze. Do you <coughs> think the fault is only your husband's? Do you think you have done anything that make your husband unhappy? Uh, do you think there is something uh, something can be done to the marriage, so we can ask questions like that to analyze the situation. And then we try to help them to arrive at the problem. Is the problem just sexual problem? Is the problem just money problem? Or is the problem also relationship problem? So we try to find a problem. And then we try to explore the solution. Okay, what do you think are some ways? So exploring instead of teaching. Asking what are some possible ways? Have you tried some ways? Does this work or not? So we try to explore and sometimes we guide. Explore, exploration means it's like we go in the dark and try to find which way. Yes. So we find a possible way. So it's brainstorming. And then sometimes we guide. We know a way but we try to guide the person to go to this way. Them some. Right. To, to, to guide them to arrive at a certain conclusion. Yes. And then, and then we we'll ask them, are you willing? Uh, so what, uh, what are some possible ways? And then they say, okay, we can do this, do that. And then you can say, that's good. If they try to say, it's good. So we ask them, what are some possible ways to solve it? And then uh, they say, uh, we can try to be nice to each other. That's very good. How can you do it? So we try to let them think. If they think more, then they're more motivated to change. They think more. They, they think of something is better than I tell them. And then uh, if they cannot think of anything, then I'll say, do you like me to tell you how? Uh, some possible ways. I will tell some possible ways. And then they say, okay. Then I'll give them some possible ways. I also will do some teaching. I'll tell them, okay. Now I'll talk about communication. How to have words of grace how to have words, words of law with kindness. And then, uh, so I have this suggestion how to, uh, how to solve the problem. And then I will have them practice. Now try to solve a problem in front of me. Now, earlier I said that if for marriage counseling very early, I would say something like, uh, uh, what is the good thing about your husband and wife? Uh, how has he treated you well in any way? Uh, what are some good things in his life? And also, uh, do you have hope in this marriage? Do you want to work on a marriage? So for marriage counseling, I will ask this question. Now for individual counseling, I will also say, okay, um, do you think your life is precious in God? Do you want to make the best of your life? Do you think there's hope that your life can change? So now some people say, I have no hope. I cannot change. I, I'm too lazy, I'm too weak. Then I will assure them God wants them to, to bless them. So now, so that is at the beginning of the counseling. And then when it comes to this point of practicing for the couple, then I'll say, okay, words of grace will be like, I'm, I'm so happy to have you. You, are, uh, you, you have been kind to me, you have been good to me. Uh, I thank you for everything. I love you, I like you. So these are words of grace. And then words of the law, there's exploration, and then how can we solve this problem? Guiding, try to guide the other person, and then teaching. Now sometimes there's teaching too. 
But teaching can be done in a very good way, like the wife can teach her husband and say, well, you know, uh, if you talk to me gently, I'll be very happy. I'll be very happy when you talk to me gently, and can you talk like this? So this is the wife trying to guide the husband to change. They, they can do that too in a daily life, you know. <coughs> I would like you to talk like this to me. Yes. And then, so guiding, teaching, the command. There's need to command. But there is gentle command and, and a rough command. Please take away, take the garbage for me. Please help me. So that's gentle command. But then rough, take away. yeah, rough will be, take it, do it. <laughs> and then uh, accusing. Accusing, you didn't do it. So I tell them these different ways of communication. Accusing. And then the last will be condemning. You never did it. You're never good to me. You never, never listened to never me. Never complain. No, no. What I mean is these are words of the law. We need to say words of the law too. But how do we say it? The best is to say guidance. Uh, I mean uh, exploring and guidance. Sometimes we have to do teaching. Sometimes we have to have command and now uh, criticizing, do we do it? Sometimes we can still do it, but we can do it in a gentle way. Uh, but it's best to guide, you know, do you see any problem with that? Uh, do you think you can improve? And then condemnation, I will only use it if someone doesn't repent. I will say, do you realize that if you continue sin, God will judge you and you lose salvation. It's very serious. I can be talking in a gentle way, but, but I'm... Now, as a counselor in marriage, sometimes you may become annoyed. If the situation does not... If, the, if you are trying to advise someone, then he or she is not get, going to get what you are doing. If they don't repent, yes. then I can have warning. You warn them. Warning. I can say, if you decide to divorce, yes. it it makes God unhappy and it could affect your future life. At this point, if you want to make this decision, uh, it's a, you know, according to God's word, it's a bad decision. Do you really want to do it? So that's warning. So we can have warning and sometimes condemnation. When the people doesn't repent, then we can say, what you're doing, you bring the judgment of God. It's very serious. But I can say in a gentle way. I don't have to shout at them. So what I'm saying is, these are the words of, of the law and we can say in a gentle way or in a rough way. It depends on our heart. If our heart is good, then we'll say it in a gentle way. So this is a process of counseling. I just briefly give to you. Uh, let's go through it again. First, uh, yeah, <laughs> listening. And then uh, I will add here, I just add here to give hope, you know, like to find out if uh, are they willing to they believe it can be better so to give hope listening and listening and then responding to the to the need to their needs and feelings and to and to give hope and then trying to find out the problems guide them to understand the problems exploring huh? to explore to explore yeah trying to explore what is the root problem and explore how to solve it. And then have them practice to solve the problem in front of me. To have them talk to each other. Like, okay, I will ask them, can you think of one thing in your life now that you have to take care of? Can you talk to each other about it? And then in front of me, I will guide them. Guide them. Uh, if they say anything too rough, I will say, now hold it. What do you think the other person will feel when you talk like that? And then if they say, uh, I guess you'll be unhappy, can you think of a different way to say it? And then at the end, I will give assignment. I will ask them, okay, go home and start to do this and tell me the progress. So this is a, a, general, a very brief description of the uh, counseling process. Uh, do you want to ask any more questions? No, I want, to, I want us now to shift it to spiritual counseling. Okay, okay. Now, spiritual counseling is still the same. But then, the point is, I want to change this person's spiritual life. For instance, you said that this man wants to have a second wife 
instead of following God. So then for him, it's a spiritual problem because he sees having ch children and submitting to the people is more important than listening to God. Then I will guide them and, and ask them. And, and I will ask them that diff there are different ways to approach. Now, do you realize that you are offending the law of God? And what happened is, uh, you know, God is in control of everything. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God can bless you? And if you follow God, He will bless you like Abraham. When he was too old, he can still have children. So he can do that to you too. So do you want to believe God or you want to find your own way? And uh, now the best way to change people's spiritual life, if people are not willing to change, we just command them to change, they won't change. It's to guide them. Do you realize God is almighty? Do you believe that? Do you believe God loves you? Do you believe that God has ability to help you? Do you believe that your life will be better when you follow God? So that's uh, one part, to guide them to understand the importance of following God. And very often I'll pray with them to experience the Holy Spirit. And I said, that means God, God is with you and blessing you. So you can pray. When you pray, every time you pray, you can enjoy God. When you enjoy God, then prayer will be, you don't feel it's a long time. You just pray and enjoy God and you have strength and God bless you. It is very wonderful. So for each of the teaching, each part they do, how to repent, how to... But first I will come to the love of God. God loves us, God cares about us, and God blesses us when we follow Him. And then we can come to Him with repentance. Are we willing to put down our sins? And then to love God and have a relationship with Him. And, uh, and then to obey Him. And then God is very happy. And then you can also serve God and bless people and God will be happy with anything you do for Him. God is very happy and He will for sure bless you. So do you want to follow that way? So uh, spiritual counseling is not just a one-time thing. With time, when the whole church has that atmosphere, some people follow God and then let them uh, testify how they have changed, how they have helped people, and how the new people also testify how they change. Like in your place, you have so many children. They have, it's, very, they have, it's very easy for them to bring the children to love Jesus. Now this child wants to share about his change. And then they share, wow, it's so wonderful. We give glory to God and this person, God is very happy with. Do you want to be like that? So this also would encourage the spiritual life of the people. And then some people have problem. Sometimes it's direct confrontation. But for some people, they need gentle, loving, especially some women, to have some women care for them uh, and, and guide them. But <coughs> loving them and meeting their needs and praying for them sometimes will soften their heart. For some people, it's straight teaching, counseling. For some people, they still need a lot of care and help before they will learn to love God. Do you want to ask any question about Now, are the steps of God for spiritual counseling the same as those of for marriage? Yeah. Same the steps thing. are the same. The steps I told you is same general. For, and yeah, for general. Yeah, general. Because it's still... Now, depends on when the person comes to me or when I go to the person. Yes. What do we start with? For instance, the person comes to me and says, it's hard for me to pray. It's hard for me to forgive. Then I would listen find out the situation and then I say yes I know it's hard and then uh, and then try to explore uh, why is it important to forgive and how and then how you can start to do it now if it's someone that is very um, rebellion to God and then you want to talk to the person someone comes to church and always sleep in the sermon and doesn't obey God and hurt other people. Now that's a different story. Because the first now, one... Let, let me give you, there is a case there in my church there. There is a mother, she's a widow. She has six girls. Three of them, they are married. But the other three, they are not yet married. Some of them, they are just giving birth. They have not been married. They don't have a permanent husband. They just get a man, they stay with him or 
for three or two years they divorce. So some of them they are divorced up to three times. Now because of that, this woman has really been affected. Her spiritual life has been affected. What those the, what those ladies are doing, and this woman is a leader in the church. So wherever she is coming from the church and finds that they are doing against the, the, the will of God, that pulls down her spiritual life. You mean that because her daughter is not married? Yes, they so are three, but they are just giving birth. They get married and divorced. They get married now. Okay. After that, they, the children, the grand now children, they bring them back their home. Okay. So they come here, they do what they do here, then they go back to husband to the adulterers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, the last sentence I didn't. The hear. adulterers, adultery, adultery. Yes. That means so they have just another... give birth. If they after giving birth, they take care of that child. After the the child has grown up, they come and dump her here to to their mother. Then they go to other places. Another man. Yes. So so okay. almost now somebody has got to be married four times. Okay. Four husbands. Okay. Now because of that, this woman she's really she has been really affected with that, and her spiritual life is always decreasing as time goes by. Right. Now she's saying now what what can I do? How, uh, I can't go and tell people to change to, to to I can't go and tell people to 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 care for their children properly because look at my family. I'm supposed to live as an example, but now look at how my children are doing to me. Okay, now I I have to say this: a godly person, a godly person, will do his best to lead his family. Now certainly. She has not done a good job in the past. That's why the children has grown up like that. But if she was converted in the middle of the process, and, and it's already hard to ch turn them back, then it's not her fault. Now it depends on whether she has done her responsibility. If she has already done her responsibility and the children still disobey, then it's the problem of the children. Then she needs to learn to let go. <coughs> because as I said, don't eat garbage. The garbage includes the sins of the children. If they don't want to follow God, she can ask God for ways to guide them. But the children are still a different person. A godly person cannot guarantee all his children will follow God, but he can do his best. If he has done his best, he told, tell the church, I've done my best, but they still turn away from God, that is not his responsibility. I don't think that we should make him responsible for that. And, and, then, and then she can have a clear conscience. I've done my best and I let go so I can serve God with joy and gladness. Because we cannot guarantee, uh, we cannot guarantee our family members will all follow God.